Before uh, we address what happened on the field, I think we need to first remember what happened, the tragedy that happened uh, at the Cameroon Commodores game, where eight people have died in a stampede ahead of the game, where seemingly only one gate was open and people wanted to rush into the stadium and with um, very low security standards and also slow checks for COVID and so on. It all came to um, came to a head, and uh, to me, it kind of seems unfathomable in many ways that uh, in this day and age, people still can die at a stampede. So yeah, um, I wanna take a quick moment of silence, and then we'll go into the sporting stuff. Hello my soccer universe, well the round of 16 of the AFCON is in the books and I decided to wear Burkina Faso because I don't know how often I'll be able to wear them uh, again for this tour and tour tournament. Um, tragedy at the Cameron Comoros game aside and not just focus solely on the sporting uh, side of things. I gotta say, I mean, uh, there are two stories, I mean, actually three or four, but you know, the two main ones are that the favorites were rather disappointing in this round. Uh, there was not, there was one way, uh, only one half convincing great team, Morocco, I would say, um, and even they had to struggle, uh, but there were many courageous outsiders that actually really 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 ignited that uh tournament in many ways yes there were not many goals scored the games were not all that great and again if you're watching the afcon for the great games i think you're not in the right place i always say the afcon for me is to watch the whole surroundings you know the people dancing in in the stands uh that is a sight to uh behold a general feeling that you know you have here a big tournament in a continent that usually gets very much overlooked and then of course the great jersey matchups that you don't get in any other competition i mean the color and the flavor is just uh great however we also got at least one really 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 bad jersey matchup i have to say uh which is also very afcon uh the wackiness of jerseys uh this will be another one i am planning that on saturday probably you should receive a seventh installment of the FCON jersey review where I talk about all the jerseys that I missed. So uh, a, a few more quirks there. But I would say I uh, will go game by game, then we'll look at, into how the three bracket sets up and uh, into the favorites. I actually saw a little bit of every game, but um, you know, most of these were uh, played at times when I was uh, more or less working or otherwise uh, busy, but then there were not that many highlights. I think there was only one or two games that really dragged me away from uh, doing uh, different things. It started on Sunday, Burkina Faso against Gabon. I actually did make an effort to watch that one because it was uh, kind of in a sweet spot where nothing else was really going on that was of that big of an importance and it ended in a penalty shooter, which, which is always nice. Um, you know I like Burkina Faso, so I'm happy with the outcome. Uh, Burkina Faso, I think, largely was the better team. However, um, you know, missing a penalty uh, through Traoré definitely didn't help. And uh, he scored a pretty nice, nice, nice goal from far out. Look, uh, the goal, uh, the goal, 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 goal made it 1-0 in the 28th. And then Gabon came a little bit, um, scored an equalizer. That was disallowed. Uh, I was breathing a little bit sigh of, sigh of relief. Um, and then after the yellow red for Obisa, actually uh, Burkina Faso had many chances to actually seal the deal, but they never could. And the longer the game went on, the more, uh, in a way, nervous I almost uh, was. I mean, I, you know, if Gabon would have advanced, it would have been fine to me as well. As well although I, I was more had a more of a rooting interest for Burkina Faso. Uh, but Gabon then really uh, had some chances. And then they get the equalizer in stoppage time with a man down. And at that point, I thought the momentum had almost switched over to Gabon because I couldn't feel the man advantage. 
I have a Burkina Faso who is still always playing in white and I don't quite get, 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 get it because I mean okay, I used to play the, see them in green and I think the green trees are nice and I think a white against yellow matchup is never a really good one. In any case they drag themselves to the penalty shootout where Gabon takes the um, a first shot and it all goes smoothly until the on the fourth one Kanga misses uh, and I was like yeah but Simpore also does so and then it's again it goes really 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 long um, where uh, the next three so uh, fifth six and seven for both teams convert and rather convincingly so I uh, also thought that the uh, um, both goalkeepers made quite a spectacle there and then uh, the eighth round both missed then uh, Palun misses for Gaga Bon and Udrago Udraogo uh, puts it away for Burkina Faso to go through. That was almost the most eventful game of the entire round of 16 uh, in many ways. Uh, Nigeria are complete disappointment against Tunisia. Yes, I did not see too much of that one because uh, Milan Juve was at the same time and both games are boring as can be, to be honest. Nigeria looked sluggish. Everything that I... Um, lauded them for they did not show and tunisia had the organization for uh, the game and right after i have to have my um uh, uh, mzakri i'm sorry uh took a shot and it was definitely goalkeeping me it's maybe mistake give tunisia the lead um and then there was nothing coming and uh, as soon as alex Iwobi got sent off with a red card i knew it will be hard uh, i think there was only one chance but then it went wide Thoroughly, utterly disappointed by Nigeria, to be honest. Uh, even them playing in the nice away jerseys, is the one that I almost wanted one to get. Yeah, I'm glad I did not. Uh, really, really disappointed because I really thought that Nigeria had the squad and had the strength from everything I showed in groups, groups to go all the way through. Guinea against Gambia. I mean, I know that Guinea uh, is kind of, I, I never say, it's one of those second tier powers and Gamb the Gambia is the, for the first time um, uh, there at the FCON. But when I looked at the li lineup, I mean, I know more players from the Gambia almost than from Guinea. And I thought uh, with the, all the euphoria coming, it will uh, get them through. And it was an uh, even game. I just love the kit for uh, Guinea, the red, yellow and green is just awesome. But it was the Gambia who uh, actually was the better team and I snatched them the winner through Musa Barrow. And I think it was not even that undeserved. I think the Gambia fairly made it well through. And they were about to face the winner of Cameroon against Comoros where the big story coming into it is that Comoros didn't have a goalkeeper and an outfield player had to play uh, in a goal and so it was uh, Al Hadur and if you have seen the pictures he took the goalkeeping kit from one of the regular goal goalkeepers and then they had to tape his squad number on there and I really gotta say he actually acquitted himself very unorthodox but hey, he acquitted himself very, very, very uh, well. I mean, he made some miracle saves, <laughs> especially in the second half, where I really have to say, um, I think we all should pay a big round of applause for Comoros uh, it, at Cameroon. It comes in addition, they have, they got a red card, rather harsh one, in the seventh minute. Yes, I can see why it's given, but it was a harsh red, red, red card, which put everything into Cameron's favor, but Cameron didn't show much. Yes, they got them the lead in the 29th through Toko Ekambi, but it was not that the, 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 the Cameron was have, having all out assault. Comoros really hung in there tough, and actually with a little bit better finishing, I think they could well have scored an equalizer. Uh, as I said, the second half, I mean, the Comoros goalkeeper, he half stared the ball out of his own net, but he, uh, on many occasions, he made really good saves as, as well. He just couldn't save the one by Abu Bakr in the 70th. But Comoros didn't, uh, never gave up, and um, Jangama scored in the 81st a wonderful free kick, kick goal. And I think it has to be said a bit. Onana probably. I'm not saying it was his fault, but he probably should have said it. the thing. And I know there was a lot of tragedy surrounding the, the game, which I only heard the next day, which kind of dampens a little bit because I think it also takes away from the great performance that Comoros put in. Um, Cameroon is my favorite African team. 
There's no doubt about that. But the way that Comoros played their hearts out, I really, really uh, fell in love with them. At uh, their similar as as it was with Madagascar uh, two years ago, really great performance from the uh, from them. They even got another man then sent off. Uh, nah, that 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 was another game. But you know, with ten men, with an outfield player as a goal uh, a goalkeeper, only losing two one, scoring probably the best goal of this entire round. Bravo Comoros, definitely enriched the tournament big, big, big time. And I also have to uh, an, another nice is that after the after the game, Onana immediately went to um, the outfield goalkeeper and uh, and congratulated him and said, "You played a really great game." So that's a high level of sportsmanship there. From that to the, probably the worst jersey matchup that I've seen in an extremely long time. Senegal as a home team plays in the dark green away jerseys and Cape Verde play in the dark blue jerseys. Yes, if you look closely and you're not colorblind, you have a chance of distinguishing the two teams. And fortunately, Senegal have this lime green shoulders that helped big time. However, uh, that was just a foreboding of what an absolute uh, horrible match that was in many ways. First of all, the refereeing really was not uh, that, that great. I mean, first, Sa Sadio Mane hit the post in the, sex, in the second minute, and I really thought, yeah, maybe we'll finally get to see Senegal. That was the only thing we really got to see from Senegal, the entire time match. They were really held by, uh, yes, it was a kind of rash challenge, challenge but do you need to send off Andrade for that? In the 21st I minute, mean, I think the yellow card to me was all right because he was going for the ball. It was not in any way malicious. Then in the second half, uh, and that's another scene that shows was in many ways a, a problem. It was a very long pass out that Sadio Mane wants to get it, and, and through his speed, he can play it with his head. And the goalkeeper uh, Vozinha comes out and also wants to head it, but misses and. In full speed, both collapse, uh, uh, clash, uh, bump their heads and clash onto the floor. And when you saw Sadio Mane, I mean, he looked knocked out cold. If you saw the goalkeeper, I mean, he barely could walk straight. I mean, he wanted to play, to, to play on an R again. No, he had, had had to be taken off, but that Sadio Mane was not taken off immediately is just unfathomable to me. He even had to go to the hospital, but before that, uh, after, you know, what seems uh, six mini minutes. I mean, there was a free kick from that. Vozinha then even gets sent off, which I think I can see even a little bit more because at the moment where, you know, he passed, the ball passes him by, then he kind of tries to just knock out uh, Sadio Mane. So I can see that red cut a little bit more. From that free kick, it resulted a corner kick. From the corner kick, Sadio Mane uh, still not being right scores. And then immediately come, 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 comes off. I mean, they had to relook it because there was maybe a foul in the build-up, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then he makes baby, basically at the kickoff, you can see him just falling down and he has to be brought to hospital. I mean, uh, absolutely atrocious game in so many ways. Two red cards where I think at least one not right. And then uh, late on, Diang scores the second goal for Senegal. But Senegal still very disappointing uh, throughout this tournament and I honestly if there is a team that is well or on, on the back I don't know Senegal cannot break them down it is really 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 bad in that sense um, I think the second most of you know an entertaining game between Morocco and Malawi again Malawi playing their hearts out an underdog with uh, and to, to me is almost like iconic uh, with the huge numbers on the back. I mean, it almost looks like American football. And I have, I have to say, these little charms is what makes the AFCON the AFCON because you don't see this at a World Cup or or or, or yours. And I actually really love love the one. This is a touch. We need humongous numbers that we can see very well. But not it's not only the humongous numbers that uh, in the end Malawi to me it's also they are showing because. There, uh, I don't give a you know what attitude. It was uh, exemplified by Mango um, when he uh, takes the ball and he sees the goalkeeper far out. He takes a shot from way out and it sails into the net. Seventh minute, one nil Malawi. 
And you think, uh oh, do we lose another favorite? Nah, Morocco uh, needed time, but I think started from third, third minute, they started hitting the woodwork twice. I think one was just saved uh, for a shot from Hakimi. And then right before the half, and the series scores the equalizer. And at that point, I, I think the writing was on the wall that Morocco is going to win. But I think if this goes 1 0 uh, into the break for Malawi, Malawi has a chance, but I think that one kind of, yeah, you were already, already lucky to not concede earlier because of two twice hitting the woodwork. <laughs> then end the series scores that, that one, and I thought, yeah, this can only go Morocco's way. I mean, Malawi fought hard and needed to take another a wonderful free kick, almost the same position as the one he took against Gabon. He just chose a different corner. In some ways, maybe even a better free, free kick. Hakimi gets the winner for Mor Morocco, and Probably should, it should have been 3-1 there at the, at the day after. But that was a game that I fully enjoyed watching. Morocco, moving on, and I think of all the favorites, at least in this run, Morocco looked in a way the best source so far. And it's another or North African team. And I have been down on North African teams throughout the group stage. But uh, in this run, the North African teams actually have been doing quite well. Everyone! Talked about how Ivory Coast against Egypt will be the big clash that everyone should be looking forward for, for, to. Unfortunately, I had a big work meeting for almost the entirety of uh, for the entirety of reg regulation. I just had it, uh, uh, you know. I checked the scores here, here, there, but from what I hear, I didn't miss much. That game disappointed on every error account. And it was to me, I mean, uh, when I just watched a little bit over time, I said to my wife, it's very clear this is going to penalties. Yeah, and yeah, for, we had dinner, family got down again, like for Big Faso Gabon, we watched the penalties. This time the penalty shooter was rather good uh, with, almost, with everyone scoring, except for Eric Bailly, who, weird run-up, weird shot. I mean, from the run-up, you could tell already which uh, side he will be going. Uh, that the save was still great from the goalkeeper because the shot was at least high, but the penalty looked weird and um, a goalie got the touch on it. It goes on the crawl cross point in. And I gotta say, I had a feeling that it needs to be the immediately there that there after the Egyptians need to miss um, uh, the average, the, the, the average coast will be starting because I thought uh, as soon as it goes to Salah. It will be only Egypt, and it was only Egypt. So uh, uh, they were really, really uh, good, at least from from penalty spot. But that game was a downer, and even a bigger downer. Although it was not a game that everyone was watching, was Mali against Equatorial Guinea. Um, I think only two shots on goal. Um, at first, I thought Mali was better, but the longer the game went, the better Equatorial Guinea came. And I think over the entire game. I think Ecuadorian Guinea probably would have deserved even to win it. Uh, that's me as a Mali uh, supporter because I really want to go Mali on because I want to have this. I want to reuse these jerseys as much as possible. Uh, and then it goes to penalties. And yes, I, I don't hide it. I was for Mali, um, and I was very happy when Nzue misses his the, the first one. It all went right. I uh, it's the third penalty through a uh, capo. Who basically tells a, pan a panic, uh, similar to what in 2012 Pirlo and then Sergio Ramos did at the Euros, which completely unnerved the next two shooters for Mali, who uh, both could not convert. Uh, but fortunately for Mali, uh, uh, Ghanais' fifth pen penalty, who would have sent them through, was saved, and so Toure can equalize. And then it is Ecuadorian Guinea had really good power penalty takers the first two were really really well done i think the the goalie was uh, there with enemy but then sako misses and uh mal is out at equatorial guinea uh through and again rather deservedly so uh mm. i have to say over over, over although it does hurt a little bit so with all these games, the bracket looks as follows. We have Burkina Faso against Tunisia, which probably is a game of Evenly matched teams, I will say, slight favorite. Uh, Tunisia will see the, um, it soon. Uh, we have Senegal against Ecuador Guinea. We have Gambia, the Gambia against Cameroon. And we have Egypt against Morocco, which is the, uh, the tie of the round. Uh, and if we uh, look now at how it's projected for, for forward, of course, Tunisia is a slight favorite over Burkina Faso. 
Senegal, of course, against Ecuador Guinea, but I can see Ecuador Guinea pull, pulling a lot of upsets. This is the first time that they made it that far out, outside of the home country, and they are well organized, so that might cause trouble to Senegal. Um, Cameron again needs to play spoilers for another one of the darlings of the Tour 2 tournament, which is a little bit uh, tough. Of course, you would say Cameron is going through, but. The way that the Gambia has been playing, I'm not sure if it's that uh, straightforward. And then, yeah, as I said, the big one is Egypt against Morocco, although I don't expect a big game. Uh, projecting forward is still the Senegal against Morocco final uh, with Tunisia against Cameroon uh, in the third place matchup. I still would say that a North African team will not win, although I'm looking at the moment a little bit more at Morocco. They seem to be the most well put together team. But if there's anything, this AFCON has been show, has been had a lot of surprises and I wouldn't be surprised if anything like that would happen again and we see a complete surprise winner with Burkina Faso, maybe one of those. When will the matches be played? Um, we have the Gambia and Cameroon coming uh, Saturday, Burkina Faso, Tunisia uh, right there after then, the big one, Egypt, Morocco on Sunday, followed by Senegal against Equatorial Guinea. Uh, and who are now the favorites? Well, uh, since Cameroon, Senegal are uh, <laughs> on paper very easy ties they of course get washed all the way up and morocco has the biggest thumb some books so that's why morocco is down although in if you always have the favorites advancing it would be morocco winning it um but yeah you see it here we have a senegal camera morocco and tunisia are at the top four with senegal now uh at least by the numbers the big favorite however as i said i don't quite see it that way senegal to me looks really really weak but maybe they have the best remaining squad. So yeah, that was it from me from, from the AFCON. I don't know exactly when I will do now the next re review. If I will wait for all the quarterfinals I will do after each match day. I uh, have to see how this uh, will go. In any case, I would like to know how you saw the games. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!